Welcome to the Necklace Workshop. I'm Paul. This is hodgepodge number two and goodness me I've had a good week. Lots to share with you. Uh, information about lathes, uh, shaping machines, engraving machines, original collet chuck and Jacob's chuck for the Unimat SL lathe. Uh, new workshop news, new email address, vintage tools, uh, vices and snooker. Uh, also, well, so uh, I guess it's time for you to pause the video, get a cup of tea or coffee, and get comfortable for hodgepodge number two. <laughs> So let's start with uh, what's on the tray. Um, so we've got I've got two um, two sets of uh, um, headstock uh, bearing uh, springs for ready for the restoration of the uh, the lathe and the, and the mill. So uh, yeah, I'm ple pleased I managed to track those down. So one step closer to being able to get all the have all the component parts to allow myself to uh, start work on that. So that's good. Um, what else have we got? So uh, this is what I was most excited about. This is a, a genuine uh, Unimat SL collet chuck. Um, it's a E16, so um, not like the modern ER16s. And I have one um, two mil collet for it. So, um, Fabulous, I got it, and I hope to be able to make a um, use this as a pattern and, and, and make a replacement or make a uh, another one myself. I did spend stupid money that I, I can't believe how much money these things go for, but the main purpose was to, to get a pattern so then um, I could uh, copy it effectively. Um, this is an ER ER sixteen, so the uh, the modern version of the uh, the E sixteen, readily available. So I've got one of those, and I've got an E ER sixteen collet holder. Um, obviously, it doesn't fit on the chuck, but between those two, I should be quite. Um, uh, I should I should better get all the dimensions and actually design one design what I need to, to produce myself. So quite excited about that. Um, next thing was a um, genuine um, uh, three jaw chuck for the um, SL lathe. This is what came with them when uh, when they were made in the um, 50s, 60s and 70s. Um, I wish I'd taken a bit of a photo of it before because I've cleaned it up a bit. Um, still runs quite well, but I think I'm going to try and strip it down, and 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 um, and I think I can still get rid of some of these marks um, again when I start start the restoration. But it's nice to have a genuine one. I'm going to do a um, a video next week. I hope to on the um, various chucks on the SL lathe. So um, I'll do a comparison because I've got a um, uh, a cheap. Um, Imitation, I suppose you would call it, um, and try. I try and show the difference between the two. So uh, yeah, so that was another pleasing thing. And the last thing um, is this: it's a Miller's Falls Orsford hand vice. And I, I picked this up um, on eBay, and and it was really because I'd seen it first of all on Rob from the Xanadu channel. Um, and uh, Rob had been given this from um, Alan from uh, the Retro Steam Channel, or sorry, Retro Steam Tech Channel, and um, it's a it's a pretty cool hand tool. You can use it to hold small components. It's a the, they hand land screws, and you can put all these little tools in there. It's a bit, I think it it's a, a bit like a multi tool, really. Um, from the uh, 50s um, I will do a little video on it um, in the in the future however really if you're interested I don't really plan to go over what uh, 
what Rob and Alan, I mean, Alan's videos is great. It, it really does um, uh, give lots of details on the history. He's got the, the patent and um, and even the original sales um, uh, brochure sort of extracts on that. So, yeah, it, it, if you're interested in them, it's worth having a look at Alan's, um, Alan from uh, Retro Steam Tech. Yeah, but... But yeah, so that's really what's on the tray. Um, all good stuff. So I was very pleased um, uh, to to get this make progress this week. Um, so some other bits and bobs. Uh, I didn't get to the workshop. I mean, my mates won this week. They were all out working. However, I spoke to him and I'm going to visit next Friday and hopefully be able to move in the uh, following week. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I've set up a um, channel specific email address, the Nacklers Workshop uh, at hotmail.com. Um, I'll put, I've updated the um, channels ab uh, about uh, page to have that, the, the details of or the, the new address. So, so if anyone wants to make contact, that's there or, or set up now. And, um, Yes, the wonderful GoPro. This is the fir third time of recording this because I'm s struggling with it. Uh, nothing actually wrong with the GoPro. It's just the uh, operator error, um, sort of old man syndrome. So um, I will crack it next week and hopefully um, be able to move forward. So that would be good. Um, so uh, we'll go off and have a little bit of a walk around and look at some of the other bits that uh, I've managed to get up to this week. These snooker cues are from a, an old um, club I'm a member of. Um, the club's been going since 1906 and these are snooker cases that hang on the wall. Um, they give me about 15 of them and ask me if I can try and make five uh, good ones out of them there. They're made out of various material and uh, should be an interesting little project to try and fix them. Um, I will record it for you. So uh, these two are a couple of vices. The green one um, I used to use when I calibrated fuel pumps in the um, 80s. Uh, the, uh, the blue one is a small small vice I picked up on eBay. It's reversible so it's got three jaws. Um, I need to replace the jaws with uh, well, I think I might do them with copper, copper jewels moving, you know, shortly. So during this week, I've watched a few videos on um, hand shaping machines, and um, I watched a a good one by Matt from Look Creations, and also one by Larry Poindexter who made his own one. Um, I must admit I've somewhat fallen in love with uh, shaping machines. Um, I started the search for a uh, hand shaper and came across a listing for um, a small workshop that was being sold off um, and ended up buying uh, a hand shaper that had been motorised, an old lathe and a hand built draw press. I think the shaper may be an adept number one or two. Uh, I haven't got a clue what brand or what make the lathe is. If any of you can identify it, please let me know. Um, I was really only after the shaper, so I may well um, sell the lathe um, and try and get a new one um, as originally planned. Um, I picked them up on Tuesday and I'm quite excited about that. Uh, another thing that went on on uh, Thursday I did a 400 mile round trip and picked up two things uh, rather tatty uh, and misshapen uh, starrett tool chest uh, and an engraving machine uh, the engraver is a nice bit of kit but sort of somewhat grubby uh, so another thing for me to scrub up I decided to keep the engraver here at home and well once I've got a new desk to put it on I'll, I'll show you it in action. Um, 
Well, hopefully you haven't all fallen asleep now because I've been rambling for quite a while. You know, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers and my old ones. I can say that now. I've been in action for two weeks. Um, I really am grateful to you all and quite amazed how uh, things are progressing. Uh, next week I'll pick up the lathe and shaper and we'll give you a closer look. So until then, stay uh, happy, strong and healthy. Cheerio.